Thank you for joining us as we look back at eFest South America 2018. First, we're going to be taking a look at the human powered vehicle team from Venezuela who had a very interesting journey to Rio. And then joining us immediately after the video live are team members who are going to be speaking about that special journey and where they are now. I heard about the day first on the webpage. It was our best chance to develop competitive design engineering in Venezuela. E-Fest is all about competing, creating, innovating, and celebrating. So we are expanding our global footprint. We want to engage and bring in more student members. They're not only the future of engineering, but they are the now of engineering. So we made the decision to come here. We did a very good vehicle with very low budget. We were like a, a cool team, a good team before, like in between 2000 and 2002. There were many uh, prototypes and they did compete and they did well. So we had like a, a first idea of what we wanted. We knew we wanted a recumbent, a short wheelbase bicycle. Then the, the question came by, so how we do it? We did first a topology optimization analysis. The main objective of this was to optimize our budget because the budget was very low. So we need to do our best to optimize everything. When you get this close to the competition, you don't like feel your suffering. I mean, you're excited to get there and you're decided to get there. We took like three buses, two taxis, and a plane to get here. The travel lasts like five days. We carry with the vehicle, the, all the pieces, the frame, the chassis, uh, just on our backs. We had to take the buses the exact days. If we got late one day, we wouldn't have made it to the plane. It was not easy. After all the trouble, we finally met in Rio and we were like really excited. It's almost, I think, becoming legend at this point. I, I've heard a little bit of the backstory and I'm not 100% sure of all the details, but it seems like they really went through a really difficult time getting here. When we reached Rio, we went to Airbnb. We started to, to reassemble it, so we spent all night we assemble everything in order to have it ready in the morning. It was like a relief when we made it and we showed all the people here, the engineers, the, the teachers, all the companies that uh, turned their backs. We show even though our country is not in the best situation, we can do a lot of things. Amazing. So I am very excited right now. Even if, if, if we have some problems, uh, we're, we're okay. So it is the experience. Uh, we knew that this could happen, so we're really enjoying this, this kind of thing. After our sixth lap, I believe, uh, our pedal jumped off the crank arm. The thread in the pedal, it, it broke and it got isolated. So we need to think what we, are going, we were going to do. We use glue and then we use uh, some kind of 
tape, but it, it didn't work. And the pedal just dropped off every time we tried to attach it again. I did hear about their bike breaking during the endurance round. That was a really tough situation they were in. So we lost like 30 minutes of race just trying to fix it. So we're fixing it right now. A lot of teams uh, helped us. The Mexican team, the Colombian team, the, the, the Equator team, all got right next to us to give us some parts, everything that, that we could need in, in that moment. They did not for just win the competition. The team needs support. Here we, we all help together, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I was very excited to see all the teams helping them in the pits. Actually, it's a, I would say it's a very common occurrence. We almost expect that kind of sportsmanship at these competitions. We see it globally almost all the time in all of our races. Another Mexico guy lended us uh, a crank arm, so we changed the crank arm and we could finish the race that way. Look, she's right there. Come on, come on, come on! Yeah, she's doing it. Their best. The sportsmanship really came out towards the end of the race and it was great to see. You know, you feel like humble when that happens because you know that they really want to help you and you feel that you will have done the same for them. I feel so good because another team uh, were helping us to continue the, the ride. Uh, well, we're very thankful uh, about that. It was really, really nice. Their bike was surprisingly well done. I mean, it certainly was not the most refined vehicle I've ever seen. I've been doing this for a long time, but it was, for given the resources and the situation, very well done. That's a really impressive story. We don't really know where we will be in the overall score, but if, any, if we hadn't made it this far, or as far as we got, we would have felt like winners, because we did a really good job on making here. We wanted to show first that Venezuela, the engineering quality is still great. We can be competitive. We are at the same level of whatever engineering in the world. And to show all the students from our school and around our country that you can still dream, you know? You can still like dream big and just go like push hard to get it. Venezuela won a really special award, the Special Achievement Award, which is one of my favorite awards to give out. We give it to teams who've really just gone above and beyond or done something really special, and, and they really did getting here and then competing and just trial after trial after trial, so that was really awesome. We made it a, a, a lot of friends, we have network, networking. It was a, a, a very great experience, so I, I wouldn't change it at all. Yeah. Welcome back. We hope that you guys enjoyed that eFest flashback. And with us live now, we have three members of that team from Venezuela whose passion inspired so many of us. So thank you guys so much for being here. How are you guys today? Oh, we are great. We are great. Right now, it was a beautiful video. Uh, I think you, you did an excellent work. So very clearly, it was an interesting journey that you guys had to eFest Rio, um, but this isn't the first time that Venezuela has competed in human-powered vehicles. So do you guys want to tell us a little bit more about that, the history and what inspired this participation? Um, sí, fue la primera vez que nuestra generación participó en el eFest. Sin embargo, en años anteriores, la primera generación de nuestra universidad de, en ASME participó en el año 2006 en la Universidad de Carolina del Norte, en Charlotte. Eh, fue la primera experiencia, sin embargo, eh, no obtuvimos premios, sin embargo, se tuvo la experiencia. En el 2008 se participó 
en, en la Universidad del Centro de Florida. Sin embargo, el equipo no pudo trasladarse esa vez y solamente presentaron el informe. En el año 2009, nuestro, nuestra ciudad, Maracaibo, Venezuela, eh, fue sede. Y, y tres universidades de Venezuela fueron las que obtuvieron los principales premios. Eh, luego, en el 2010, eh, también fuimos sede en Margarita, eh, también Venezuela. Y se lograron, creo que fue en el overall, un segundo o un tercer premio. Y bueno, ya después nuestra generación en el año 2008, en el año 2018, eh, pudimos, hicimos el gran esfuerzo y participamos en Río de Janeiro, Brasil, en el, en el IFEST, porque antes las competencias eran divididas, no se, no se hacía un festival de la ingeniería, sino que se hacía un HPVC y todos los premios por todas las competencias por separado. That's actually really interesting. Um, Javier, do you want to tell me a little bit more about the decision to participate in the eFest? So in 2018. Um, well, uh, we had we have had the dream, the 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 goal to participate in an HPVC like from 2016, I guess. Is the most perfect uh, definition of a team I have ever been into because everyone gave its little part, its individual part to the completion of the goal. So we've heard back a little bit more about how eFest and the Human Powered Vehicle Challenge has affected you guys as students, but Leonardo, how, how did being a part of that team affect you in your career and post-graduation? After graduating, I was recognized by some engineers as part of the team that traveled to compete in Brazil. Uh, given that in my country, it is difficult to accomplish this fact. My professional environment is, is image in, in a very good way. I work in a plant process food and now die, that I know that the engineering community is so wide worldwide since I consult any engineer of, outside Venezuela on any equipment and that level of intrinsic friendship between engineers was experienced in ASME, only in ASME. It's something that I, I learned there. I think it's, it's a really tight-knit community and it's so exciting that ASME has members all over the world. Now, I remember, if I remember correctly, you were a leader um, in that team in Rio. Um, have you used any of your leadership qualities at your job or, or were there any other skills you took um, from being a part of that team and now you're using them at work? Well, currently I'm leading some part uh, of a maintenance group in, in my job. So I'm their leader. I need to uh, encourage my uh, team partners to get the jobs well done. So who's graduated? Where are you guys now? Where are you living? What are you doing? Where, where, where are you now? Well, I moved to Colombia um, last year. After that, I've been working with my dad. He, we have actually right now a business, a small business in here, which is growing really fast. And I'm right now also taking some courses, taking the time as, as better as I can. I'm just quite happy right now. I have, like everyone, I guess, a ton of free time maybe. And I'm just trying to use it as, as best I can, as I can. Eh, actualmente me encuentro en la ciudad de Santiago de Chile. Tengo un año, desde el 2019, estoy acá. Eh, no terminé mi universidad en Venezuela, mi pregrado. Sin embargo, acá apliqué para entrar a la Universidad de Chile, una de las más importantes. Eh, entre los recaudos o requisitos que me pidieron para entrar a esa universidad, me, per, me pedían un currículum vitae, donde, bueno, parte de mi experiencia, no tengo ningún tipo de experiencia laboral, la única experiencia que tengo 
es cuando participé con, con mi equipo en el año 2018 en, en Río de Janeiro, Brasil, y el año pasado en, en Lima, Perú, en el 2019. Eh, bueno, que fue una, una experiencia bastante fuerte, ya que eh, la mitad de mi equipo no logró llegar por, por razones de, de visa, y me tocó enfrentarlo, enfrentar solo ese, esa situación, pues. Y bueno, fue un problema bastante grande, ya que bueno, principalmente no tenía el, el apoyo de mi equipo y bueno, en este tipo de competencias se necesita más de dos manos. Eh, sin embargo, eh, competí y creo que antes de ganar un premio, la, 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 la primera razón sería competir y la experiencia que puede crear en mí eh, este viaje. Well, I'm currently living in Maracaibo, Venezuela. Uh, this is from Zulia State, it's the same state from the university that I have studied. So I'm working as a maintenance coordinating engineer for a metal processing company. I am in, in, in charge of the proper functioning, functioning of equipment such as Reciprocating compressor for refrigeration, steam boilers, uh, centrifugal pumps, displacement pumps, and submersible pumps, heat exchangers, and machines to process milk. Uh, I am focused on learning the Internet of Things environment to apply it in the company in the medium term and thus bring technology to my country. So I think that everyone that watched this video was really inspired by your story and, and your motivation for going to eFest in itself. Um, what do you guys want to tell any students that are considering going to eFest about the experience and what to expect? And maybe if you guys want to also touch on what about the human powered vehicle community and what that competition's like, maybe even for those first time students. Seeing all these kids working on themselves, developing these many skills, because I have seen uh, kids that they learn how to use uh, CFD computer programs. Uh, they learn how to simulate, they, they learn how to test stuff just because they, have, they want to win. So to win, you have to fulfill everything that is in the, in the rules. And they have to learn how to use those things. So, it's always a fulfilling um, teaching experiences for the judges and for the kids and for the, for the students that goes and do this. So it's just try it, just try it because it's a non, it's, it's always a fulfilling experience for everyone. Just go for it. It's what I would tell every guy that feels curiosity for doing, for participating in this. That is so true. And thank you so much for being here with us today, you guys. It was great to see you guys again um, after Rio. And I'm sure everyone enjoyed that video. And I'm glad every, we had the chance to share that really inspiring story with everyone. Um, for everyone tuning in, um, if you're interested in learning more about eFest, make sure you're following the eFest social media pages, which is eFest ASME on Instagram. And then also make sure that you connect with the Future Me LinkedIn page to start your journey post-graduation and make sure you're getting the best tips and tricks out there for what it's like to be a professional engineer. But once again, on behalf of ASME, we would like to thank all of you for tuning in. We would like to thank our three participants here for being here. And we hope that you guys can tune in and hear more about eFest and what ASME is up to in the future.